Um, shift six is uh, is talking about internet leads and conversion. And shift was written back in the beginning of 2000. And as we all know, the internet's changed, right? The internet's changed. So if you look at some of the materials that I sent you um, last night or this morning, if you looked at it before you got on, you're going to find that some of it is a little dated. So what that means is I think we're going to be able to get through it pretty quick today and get you guys out in this beautiful weather. Although Ann and Amber are already out in this beautiful weather. So I don't, what do I worry about? Miss Alexandra, how are you this morning? I'm good. Good, good. Thank you. Good. You got your, yes. your, your six hours. You're getting in there. Yes. Six days, not six hours. It was six days. Six days. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it was a six, something six. All right. Good morning, Jay. How are you this morning? I'm okay. How are you? Oh, are you feeling better or is not? No, I'm all right. I'm just trying to get my computer to do what it's supposed to do. I can hear it up in your sinuses or something. No good. It's, it's still, uh, it's still all that up in there, but besides that, I'm okay. As long as you feel okay, it doesn't matter how you sound, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, all right. Have you stood outside yet this morning? No, I did a little bit yesterday, but not this morning. I haven't. Oh, it's not anything like yesterday. Really? It's like 55 degrees out and no humidity. Uh, I'm gonna go out there and put some some feed on the grass. Oh yeah, anything you gotta do today before it gets hot again on Monday. Pam, did you go out on the porch? I did, I did. It's and beautiful. wasn't it worth it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> shock, 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 okay. Well, we, we're gonna get started and we're gonna talk about internet leads and conversion. And then, good, good morning, Miss Tumakia. Oh, she's not she's not attached yet. Oh, there you go. Good morning, Miss Tumakia. How are you this morning? I'm good. Uh, I she Tumakia is on with me. I turned I turned my air. I didn't turn it off this time. I learned my lesson, but I turned it up to like seventy five, and I opened all my windows. I figure I get two days of this beautiful weather, and then I'll have to go back to being yeah, off. It's, again. it's it's still on. It's just that I always keep well. I open and, and that's all. I have all my windows open. I opened all my windows back up. So I, and I don't have any um curtains here. So it's just always open. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well let's hop in and let's let's get started. So maybe we can get out of here early and we can all go outside and enjoy this gift and the beautiful day that we have. All right. So this is shift six. We go back and think about the first five shifts we talked about. We talked about you know, get get real and get right, get your mindset right for for the shifting market, right? I'm gonna stop sharing for just a minute, right? So we 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 felt the shift this week. Did everybody feel the shift a little this week? Three quarters of a percent on the interest rate from the Feds. That's gonna create this shift, right? Where it's where this is coming from. So we have to get real, get right. What does that mean? Get real, get right. Well, I don't have the book in front of me, but I'm, I'll take it as, you know, just face reality and, and, and make sure that we're on track um, to what's realistic today. That's get real. And mm -hmm. then let's get right. Having the facts in front of you to, to uh, show people what's going on. I love that. Have the facts in front of you. What do you need to do in your own business? What do you need to make sure you're doing so that you can take this shift and make it an opportunity for yourself? Um, make sure that we're educated about the market and what's going on. That way we're able to educate the clients. I love it. So stay educated. What do we need to do with our lead generation? Double it. We just have to be really real about it, right? It's on our calendar. We've got to do it, right? Before we double it, we need to make sure we're doing what we need to do, what we say we're going to do, right? So we have to make sure that's getting real. All right. So then we talked about expense management and remargining your business. Has anybody gone through your bank statements and seen, are you paying something you don't know what it is? You have annual subscriptions that you're paying for. You don't know what they are, right? Who, who, which of you guys went out and visited your money after we did shift two? I've been doing it for the last week. 
I love it. I yeah, visit it every day. <laughs> you do it every day. It Gary says every you need day. to visit our money at least every Friday. Yeah. Is your money important to you? Yes. If your money's important to you, do you need to visit it? Do you need to make sure that it's all there? Right? You don't. You don't want some surprise, right? Some surprise that, um, that you know we have. Does everybody have automatic payments? Like we let we let companies yeah. draft mm -hmm. money out of our checking accounts to pay our bills. Do you mm -hmm. think it's ever possible that they have a computer problem and they pull it twice? Mm -hmm. Yes. If they, pull, if they pull it twice, should you be the one to catch it or should you wait for them to catch it? You should. Oh, you take care of it. You should catch it, right? So if, if you're waiting, if you're waiting for somebody else to catch their mistake, <laughs> well, I'd like to draft your account. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so get real get right right so we're going to get real we're going to check our calendar we're going to make sure we got our our lead generation in place we're going to we're going to make sure we've monitored our expenses and we visited our money and we know where our money is and then we're going to make sure we know what's going on in the market so can everyone here who here would it, it who here wants to share with me what happened in the market this week that you would explain to a buyer Anybody want to try get a take a stab at that? Um, I guess I will. Okay. Uh, the interest price rates went up a quarter point. Um, not well, three quarters. So if you're interested in looking or you know trying to buy, it's best to do it now before it reflects in your interest rate that you have today, so we can get you locked in. I love it. Now, Lord. to Makia, how can you turn that into a question that let lets the buyer self-discover that they need to get real, that they need to get uh, Basically, um, payment-wise, okay, <laughs> what would you like your payment to be? Uh, what's a comfortable payment for you? I love that. How about an or or question? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw in the news this week, but the, Fed, the Federal Reserve raised the interest rate three quarters of a percent because they're trying to stop this inflation thing. Good news for you is that it doesn't show up in mortgage rates right away. The bad news is we don't know how long until the mortgage rates start changing. So my question to you is, would you rather um, wait and see and potentially have a higher payment and a higher interest rate? Or would you like to find the house right now so we can lock in while the interest rates are still low? Now, what happens when the buyer answers my question? They're going to think about um, the whole process of, you know, the interest rates or, you know, of course, it's a fact that they went up. So they're going to think about that, that they have to kind of hurry up before it reflects the interest rates on the mortgage. Yeah. They get to decide, right? Mm -hmm. They get to decide between let's get urgent, let's get a sense of urgency, or let's wait and we're okay paying higher payments. And they get to decide that maybe they're okay paying higher payments, right? That's fine. Maybe the perfect house is more important to them than a higher payment. But once they choose, then you can remind them if they say, oh, I don't want a higher payment, let's find the house. Then when you get in the house and they say, yeah, I wish the bathroom was on this side of the room instead of that one. I don't think this is the house for me. You can say, okay, so is the bathroom more important than your lower interest or your lower payment, right? You can, you can come back to that. And you can remind them on a regular basis. So think how you can ask questions. Once you get educated, think how you can ask questions that lets the buyer make the decision. If, what happens when somebody tells you you're going to do this? What's Fair your brain more. think? Um, reluctant or some people can be defiant just by nature just because you telling them that that's what they should do so automatically some people just shut down yeah didn't you guys ever do that with your kids tell them to do the opposite what you wanted them to do because you knew that would get them to do what you wanted them to do mm -hmm. right so so if they mm -hmm. but if they decide if they decide this is what's important to them and this is what they're going to do how much likely are they to do it all right, so that's that's where we are with that. Okay, then we talked about leverage, right? Shift, shift three was all about leverage. What was some of the some of the kinds of leverage that we talked about where you can do more with less time? I'm gonna pass off certain um, uh, passing off certain things that you need that you were doing. 
uh, like with the smart plans. Absolutely. Remember, we took a list. We put a plus on a, a dollar sign on one side of the paper and a minus on the other. And we went through all the things that we do all day. And if they're dollar producing items, we put them on the left hand side. And if they were uh, not dollar producing, we put them on the right hand side. And then we took a look, took a look at the non dollar producing things and thought, how could we get those done without spending as much time? And smart plans, Jay, is a great one. Smart plans is leverage for you, right? You can communicate with your database using smart plans. Also, you have my leverage solutions. All of you have access to Jessica Riley and her team, right? And she can do all kinds of things. She does your transaction coordination from contract to close, but she can also do things with your database. She can import your contacts. She can tag your contacts for you. She can do Facebook ads for you. She can have to make Facebook posts for you. She can do your quarterly zine. We're going to have another quarter coming up, right? We're getting ready to enter into third quarter. So the zine is going to come out again. The magazine, you guys all know what I'm talking about with the zine? No. She can update that for you. So think about leverage. Melissa, also that weekend, if you remember, she was talking about child labor. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, getting your kids to participate in your business. Or I think she had her mom addressing cards for her, right? So think about, you know, what you can do for leverage in your business. Um, so that's, that is shift four. Shift five, last week with Coach Laura. Who all was on with Coach Laura last week for Coach five or for shift five? None of you guys? Armand was? Armand, what'd you talk about last week with uh, lead generation, um, finding the motivated? And you're muted. You mean, hey, oh, you're saying with Jessica. With no, with with Coach Laura last Saturday for shift five, find the motivated lead generation. What did you talk about last week? Uh, capturing uh, leads and converting them. What was your biggest takeaway? Oh. All right, I put you on the spot. You're all right. The, the, the importance of conversion. The importance of conversion, right? So we're going to talk more about lead generation and lead conversion today. So, and then I don't think, I need to check with Keen and make sure the video from last week got posted so that I can go back and watch it since I wasn't here. I will tell you, I had a big takeaway last week at the coaches workshop. Aha, you know, I always ask you guys for ahas. You know what AHA stands for? Agent helping agent. So anytime I ask you for an AHA, what I'm asking you for is for you to help your fellow agents. Make sure that they heard what you heard and the way that you heard it. So that's what that is. All right. Let's jump in and check out shift six. Were you going to say something, Armand? Well, I was just going to be funny. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. You can be funny. We all we all like your humor. Why? Well, I, I was going to say "aha" stood for Armin Hayes is awesome, but oh, okay, that works too. I love it. Oh, now we got two words. I love it. Yes. I, all right. Very good. All right. Lead capture. So, so we're talking about internet leads today, and like I said. Don't, don't shut down on me a little bit. Some of this is going to be just a little bit dated because of when the material was written. But even though it's dated, is it still applicable? The internet is still yeah. the internet, right? So we're going, to, we're going to go through it. We're going to get through it, I think, pretty fast today. All right. So here's the main things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about internet lead capture and conversion. We're going to talk about the internet and real estate. And we're going to talk about the four C's. Okay. So customers are... When this was written, the internet was just started and people, people like the internet. Now, what is the internet to us? Because most people love the hood or they, you know, they can't live without it. It's their go-to, right, to Makia? I mean, yeah. this is where most people go to first. Shoot, <laughs> Ann brought up HomePath this morning and the fact that she went to a HomePath house, to, house today. 
and couldn't get in. And the first thing I did was go over to my screen and Google Home Path to see if I could find <laughs> some place where she could report that to, right? That's your go-to thing, the internet is go-to. Where do you think most people, when they think they're going to, they drive by a house and they, they're curious about it, what do they used to do? Call the number. Call the number, stop and get a piece of paper out of the box. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. because, uh, yeah, the information page, yes. <laughs> yeah, most old school realtors have little boxes out in front of the yes. Actually, you can tell an old school realtor, right? Yeah. You you know, uh, uh and, and Alexander, this is a little bit different for you, but in Indianapolis, you know if you have a four-digit MLS listing agent, how? There's gonna be an info tube out in front of the sign with papers in it. They have to reprint those papers and, and go refill those boxes on a regular basis, right? <laughs> so that's old school, right? What do most people do now? If they're driving down the street and they see a house they like, what do they do? Type in the address. In the yeah, Google. they Google it. What do we want yeah. them to do? Call Tell us. Me, what do we want them to do? We want them to open our app, right? Because we've taught them that if they see a house that they like, if they open an app and zoom in on the zoom in on the map to where they are, they'll find everything they need to know about that house. They don't even have to go to the internet. How many of you guys teach people that on their app? When you give your app to people, how do you tell them how to use it? Do you tell them when to use it? You guys know about the app and my, my, my conversation, how I get people to use it. I say, they tell me they're going on vacation and I say, oh my gosh, if you're going on vacation, you have got to download, download my app because it is so much fun when you're in a new city to open up the app and see what kind of houses are for sale and how much they are. Do you know how much a 800 square foot apartment in San Francisco costs? Oh, probably I, too much. I was in San Francisco, it was 2.2 million. Right, and oh, I could look no. at pictures of what 2.2 million could could buy me in San Francisco. That's how I get people excited about my app. Once they go on vacation and they get used to my app, now what's going to happen every time they drive by a house and they want to know how much it is? They're going to open the app. They're going to go to my app because I taught them to do it. So make sure when you give your app out, you're teaching people to do it. So that's our mobile app, right? And we're all lucky enough to have one that's branded to us. Is it perfect? Yeah. Is is our app perfect? No. Does it glitch out? Because nothing is perfect. Yeah, it'll glitch out every once in a while. And sometimes you'll get a buyer that says, I thank you for your app, but it 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 just doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. I prefer the Zillow app. Then what do you tell them? Uh, <laughs> They'll tell you them, tell even them. if you see something on there, you can still call me, you know. You can, let me, here's a question to ask when they say they like Zillow. Say, uh -huh. oh really, you like to use Zillow. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how Zillow makes money? Okay. Somebody answer me. How does Zillow make money? I'm sending the leads to other people. So that's that Yeah, thing. they sell your so information they have to, to cool. other realtors. So when you use the Zillow app, they sell your information. If you use my app, I'm not going to sell your information. Do you want your information sold? Maybe they don't mind getting a whole bunch of spam calls and texts, but maybe they do, <coughs> right? And maybe that'll help them use your app. All right, so internet. You guys all have a website. Has everybody customized their website through the Kelly guide and your command? I think I have. No, I haven't. When is the last time you went and visited your own website? Oh, mine. A long time ago. How many of you think it might be important to know what your website looks like? So there's an action item. Somebody's making a list of action items today. There's an action item. What's your action item for today? Update your website. Or at least go Isn't look it? at it, you know, just go look at it. Now our websites, just so you know, I'm, I'm signing into command. Our websites, just so you know, are designed after what the consumer wants to see. 
Um, and if you, um, you, there's, there's, we have a limited amount of things we can change to it. So there's not a huge amount of things that you need to do. This is mine. Okay. Um, and you'll see that before I was a coach, I worked with seniors. I had a transitioning senior business. And so I have a page that I added that is about transitioning seniors, but this is what you want to have. Make sure it shows you, it doesn't look anything like me, does it? You want to make sure it shows you, I probably need a new headshot. Um, and you want to make sure it has your information on here, right? And then you can customize. If you want to know how to customize your website, how are you going to figure out how to do that? Go to the um, training. <laughs> you could do that. You could also just Google it. If you go to mykw.kw.com, if you go here and you go to education uh, and you go to technology, you're going to find all kinds of resources here on your command and things that you can do. And there's a, in there, you'll find where you can update your website. Um, so Make sure you take a look at that today. Now, do you guys know, let me get to my command now. Do you guys know how to know when somebody has registered on your website or your app? No. How do you know? Oh. You, you, so you get a notification from in your, com, uh, in your command. So usually when they register, the contacts go automatically there. So they do. That, um, in your notifications bar. Absolutely. And then also, do you see this little circle with a check mark in it right here with a. Okay. Sure. Oh, you, yeah. You see that right there? Anybody in your contacts that has that little thing, they have registered on your website or your app. Now, it doesn't tell you which one, but they are registered with you because they can go then on your app or your website and use both. So that's why it doesn't tell you which one they registered on. But this is what happens when they've registered on your app, they start looking at properties and now you can see what properties they were looking at. It's gonna show up on their timeline after they've registered. They have to register, right? So when you give them your app, you need to have them register and choose you as your agent. So another action item for you guys today, go in here and look through your contacts. How many of them have this little circle with the check mark in it? If you see somebody on your website that has a circle with a check mark in it, what should you do? Put them on a smart plan. Call them. Okay. Put them on a smart plan. What else should you do? Contact, Contact. them. Contact them. them. How they Call like them, them, right? I saw that you registered on my website and I don't know when you did that. I just learned today how to find out about it. It's crazy with the technology, right? But I wanted to thank you for registering my website and I wanted to find out. Do you have some immediate real estate needs where you're just out, you know, looking around? We just try, were you wanting to know what your property was worth? How can I help you, right? Because they have registered with you. If they've registered with you, they need you for something, for something, right? All right, so now we got two action items, right? Look at your website, look at your command and see, does any, has anybody registered with you? If there's nobody that's registered with you and you have given your app out to a lot of people, what do you need to ask yourself? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Maybe not wrong, but what could I do better? When I give people my app, am I telling them to register with me? Right? When I give people my app, am I giving them a reason to use it? Okay. So if they tell me they're shopping on Zillow, have I given them another option? They can search for properties on your website and our website looks an awful lot like Zillow's website. There's a reason for that, right? Because they like the Zillow website. So Keller Williams created our websites to be to give them the same functionality, right? Only difference is we aren't selling their information. All right. So the online interactions, they complement your personal touch, right? So you still have to make those phone calls. You're complimenting the, your personal touch. All right, tell me, what's a lead? Somebody tell me, define a lead for me. Um, a lead is someone that you have actually connected with um, that interested or buying in, in the future. Not necessarily buying in the future, but you've actually spoke with them. You, okay, so you've, you've, you've had, you've had a, a connection to them, 
a conversation of some sort. Okay. Who else? Who else has a definition? There's no right or wrong answer here. Everybody has a different idea in their mind of what a lead is. What is a lead? Someone that's led you to believe that they're in the buying or selling process. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else have a definition of a lead? Okay. So when does a lead... So is a, a lead everyone in your, so everyone in your database, is everyone in your database a lead? Depends on, yes. Everyone in your database, all the contacts yeah. in your database are a lead, okay? How That's about you run a Facebook ad and you get 10 people that click on the ad and you get their contact information, are they leads? Yes. No. Yes, they are leads. Their leads. So my definition of a lead, and this is just mine, you guys, you guys each get to have your own. My definition of a lead is anyone that might potentially have interest in buying or selling or need some help with real estate. Okay. And then when they say yes, or maybe they become an opportunity for me because now they've got, they've converted from a lead, which is just a potential to now possible income, right? A pro, you know, an opportunity for me to earn income. So when I'm standing in the grocery store and which line am I standing in, in the grocery store, when I go to the grocery store, Cashiers. the longest one, I find the longest line in the grocery store, right? I got my name tag on every one of those people are a potential lead for me, right? I just have to, but this is where I'm with Tumakia because in order for me to walk out of there, I have to have some, some connection to them. Okay. There has to be some way there was some connection. So if I ran a Facebook ad and they clicked on it and they gave me their contact information, there's a connection there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm standing in the grocery store line and I said, oh my gosh, you've got lots of, you got lots of fruit in your cart. Do you really like fruit? Tell me what's your favorite fruit. That is a connection. Now they've become a lead because I'm going to have a conversation. They're going to tell me I'm a fruit, right? That's what you're going to tell me. <laughs> These are the kind of things I look in their cart and find something I can make a comment on. That's how I create conversations with people in the grocery store. Standing in the hardware store, they got whatever they got in their cart. I say, oh my gosh, you must have a big project going on this weekend. What are you doing, right? People want to tell you, do people like to talk about themselves? Yes. People like to talk about themselves. Give them an, give them an open door and they'll just tell you all kinds of crazy things. All right, so... When is a lead a lead? Okay, a lead is a lead when you feel like you have a connection to that person so that you can start finding out if they have a real estate need. So when we talk about lead generation, what are we looking for? We're looking for someone who is able, ready, and willing to buy, uh, to do business. Yeah. So lead generation is we're looking for someone who is willing to have a conversation with us. Correct. I mean, that's where it starts. We're looking for somebody who's willing to have a conversation with us. And then we're looking for a yes or a maybe. Correct. Yes. Yes. Or maybe or a referral. Right. Mm -hmm. Or a referral. All right. So when is the lead hits? So they talk about hits. That's kind of a from days gone by that was that, that but that's a click that's when they give you your information inquiries and leads all right what happens when you get too many leads you run a facebook ad and you get inundated with all of these leads that come in your database what happens i don't think you're ever gonna have too many leads but i guess you can put them on a smart plan very good so if you have them on a smart plan, then what, what, cause what could happen is they fall through the cracks, right? Is that possible? If too many came in at once, could they fall through the cracks? Ooh. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you another question. How many of you guys in your command use the lead function? So we have the ability here. Let me, let me find one. Hang on, let's get Kylie. Yeah. I'm going to filter just for leads only. Okay. So these are leads. 
for me, and you guys decide how you're going to use your command. This is just my version of, of this, is if they have an L behind them, they're a lead. That means I haven't actually got to talk to them yet. Once I talk to them and I find out where they are in their process, then I take them out of the lead of the L category, right? All the leads are on smart plans, okay? So even though I haven't actually talked to them, they're still getting communication from me so that when they're ready to talk to me, they remember they need to talk to me, right? So figure out, are you using the leads? And do you guys all know how to get to those? Um, here in your contacts, when you're adding a contact, come on, be nice to me. <laughs> I'm going to add a contact and it's just right here. Mark as a lead, right? We're just going to mark it as a lead. Now we know we haven't actually connected with them. We haven't had a verbal conversation with them. We don't know where they are in the real estate process yet, right? So they're a lead. And once we talk to them, they either become a contact because we've had a contact with them or they become an opportunity, a contact and an opportunity because they've told us yes or maybe. So think about that. Now, why would it be important? Why would it be helpful or important for you to be able to go here and find only the people you haven't talked to yet? Does anybody ever, it's time to lead generate and I don't know who to call. You ever think that? I don't know who I should call today. Nobody ever has that thought? You know exactly who to call all the time? No, I have that. You have that. Okay. So if you could go here and you could find a list of people that you've never talked to, would those be the first people you might want to call for lead generation? Lead generation is trying to convert somebody from a lead into a contact, right? From lead into a relationship. Think of that. Your contacts are relationships. Your leads are people you want to have a relationship with. So when you click on lead, the little L will be at the, will, will automatically be added at the end? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if we go in here um, to my, my, my uh, oh, I got to turn my filter off. So if we go in here to my favorite client, me, and I were to switch this, oh, I hear I don't even have to go in there. I can just click it right here and I'm going to mark it as a lead. And now it has an L up here. Okay. 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 So, so yeah. So think about that. This is leverage. This goes back to shift three, right? And we talk about leverage. You have got an amazing tool here. How useful is a tool if you don't know how to use it? it's not good <laughs> not very not very helpful if you don't know what it is anybody ever seen that like you've got this thing in your shed and you're like i don't even know what that's for right i i, I could this happened to me at the beginning of the spring and i asked my um i asked my future son-in-law what it was and he said it's a post hole digger so why in the world do we have a post hole digger <laughs> no, i don't need to dig post holes i wouldn't know what to do with it i was just taking up space in the corner of my shed I don't know if I inherited it with the house or an ex-husband or what, but I got this post hole digger, but I had a tool. I didn't know what it was, so it wasn't very useful. You have an awesome tool. Make sure you're using it. Okay, let's get back to, let's get back to where we were. All right, so we have leads. We've got leverage, right? We got leverage to handle our leads. Um, all right, so now, we're going to spend our time with people building relationships. Who, who do we want to build relationships with first? Who do we, where do we want to spend our time? We want to spend our time with the people who are motivated. So how do we find out how motivated our leads are? Well, you have to call them. You have to have a conversation with them first. You're going to have a conversation with them. If you don't get a hold of them, then you keep them in the lead bucket and you put them on what? smart plan and how are you going to know when they become motivated you're going to keep checking in on them so hopefully they respond to one of the smart plans and if not you're going to call them and check in on them anyway yeah so your smart plan needs to have you calling in on a regular basis right because you you want to make sure that when they're ready you're there with them right and 
You're also going to know when they're motivated when they get that little circle with a check mark beside it. And all of a sudden they're looking at properties on your timeline. Is that going to tell you that they're motivated? Yes. That'd be a good way to know that they were motivated. How else can you find out if they're what's going on in the world if they're motivated? Anybody ever been on Facebook and seen somebody say something about going to an open house or they were out looking at property? Like, oh no, right? So stalk them a little bit on Facebook. Um, another tactic for uh, finding the motivated is on Thursdays. So put a post on your Facebook that says, would anybody like an open house list for this weekend? If somebody comes back and says, yes, please, can I have an open house for this weekend? Did you find the motivated? How long would it take you to put that, that post on your Facebook every Thursday? Um, five minutes, not even five minutes. Yeah, if you got it ready, it's just a matter of cop, put it on there, make like create three different versions of it, and rotate them around. I think you can even schedule those in command. Can't you leverage? Could you sit on a Sunday and plan out your your posts and just schedule it to post on Thursday so you don't have to remember? If you don't, if you don't schedule it to post on Thursday, how could you make sure that you did it on Thursday? Set a reminder. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> Put it on your calendar. I love it, Grace. Yes, and to Makia, set a reminder for yourself if you use an automatic calendar, right? Make that post, find the motivated. How else could you find motivated people? Who comes to open houses? Motivated people. <laughs> Most of the time, motivated people. How about first time home buyer seminar? How about how to sell your home in a shifting market seminar? Anybody want listings? Yes. What do you think uh, how to sell your home in a shifting market might might play right now. Do you think sellers are worried about interest rates? Mm -hmm. What would be a good way to educate a bunch of sellers about interest rates and the benefit of selling now? So how do you do the, how do you organize those things like the first time home buyer seminar? Well, if you wanted to do it on Zoom, you have all Zoom account you can do 40 minutes on Zoom for free. You could also do a Facebook Live, right? That works. Um, Alexandra, are you still with us? Yes. Tell them what you and your lender do. Um, so I did one last year that was like, um, I brought my loan officer. I brought, um, and that was for Spanish speakers. So I had a loan officer uh, and a title attorney and that was four of us uh, on insurance com uh, company. So we all kind of brought our leads. And to be honest with you, we didn't have a lot of people because that was the first one after the pandemic. And we all brought like um, 25 gift cards as well. So we did a raffle. So we announced it individually. We create a campaign on Facebook. Uh, we got some snacks for people and that's what we did. And this year we're doing like a monthly with a loan officer and with a credit repair person too. Uh, so we're doing a Q and A every month and we're planning to do one on July when I get back. So it's the same thing, but we're gonna do a Facebook. So basically what we do is we create just a campaign on Facebook and they, because it's three of us, so we each individually are gonna just contact our people to just bring, um, you know, just their clients or whoever's interested in the first time buying process. I love that. So Grace, you got partner with someone, right? Find a, yes. lender, find a credit repair person, um, yeah. find an insurance agent. And that was free. I just brought food and some snacks, but I did not spend a dime. Actually, we just, everybody, and the credit, rep, actually, we had a credit repair people. So it was five of us. So everybody had like a $25 gift card and we did it also online. And my office had, they provide like a uh, couple things for marketing and everybody brought their marketing stuff too. So people love it because they all left with a little baggie of goodies. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you could do it, Grace, you could do it in the office. Okay. You could find a restaurant. 
um, you know, that, that might have a room, community rooms. Um, but you could also do it online, Facebook Live. You could do it on Zoom and then just put it out on Facebook. You know, um, Jay. Also create a, I'm sorry. You can actually create an event on Eventbrite because I did it like that before. Just create an event on Eventbrite and then share it on Facebook or whatever to get, um, lead, you know, leads that way. And then they had to enter their information as well. So you still need it if their contact information. I love that. And Jay, your series, it's a series of education, right? So you do it on a regular basis. You talking about the INSP meeting? Thing? Yeah. 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 So yeah. You, you get in front, you've, you've partnered with a lender, basically, and, and it, it's, a, it's part of an educational series, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can say that. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So, so figure out, that's a good way to find motivated leads. Absolutely. All right, so back to motivated leads. So you got to be, you got it. We've talked about this at, at shift one and we talked about it today, right? You have to be the local economist and the market expert. How many of you guys are going out to the MLS every day and looking at how, how has things changed? What's the average days on market? How many expired listings are there, right? How many listings, how many listings got listed this week? How many, how many listings were there this week? How many pendings were there this week? And how many solds were this week? Keep track of it. See how it's changing. Know how the market is a, am being impacted by the shifting market, right? The only way you're going to know what's happening is if you pay attention. I'll tell you, yesterday we staged a house that I'm stunned that we had to stage. It is a gorgeous house. And it's listed just under $400,000. It had been on the market 12 days and they had had four showings. And this is in Franklin Township like oh, wow. sought after beautiful home, right? And they called us to have a stage it because they weren't getting showings. Empty houses don't photograph well. Um, so that's the, you know, that's to me a sign of a shifting market when someone who's selling a house that was previously getting a lot of interest now all of a sudden, um, you know, needing, needing staging because they have no showing. So there's, there's a, the market is adjusting. We have to keep on top of that. So be the local economist market expert. Um, understanding the needs of buyers and sellers. What is the need of a buyer right now? The price. Yeah. Do you need to know what is one thing if you're going to write an offer on a house, what's the very first thing you need to do before you even start filling in the form? Buyer's agreement. If okay. You yes, you need your buyer's agreement. You needed that probably before you showed them the house. No, but you, you've, you've got a buyer's agreement. They're your client. They are excited. They want to write an offer. What's the first thing you need to do? Get them qualified. Okay. They're already qualified. Oh. Now what's the first thing you need to do? Right before you're ready to write the offer, what do you need to do before you even put their name on the form? You're going to call the listing agent. You got to call the listing agent. And what do you need to know from a listing agent? Uh, what's important to the seller. Uh, and what else do you need to know? What Is did you what? Their motivation and, you know, of course, um, I guess what needs to be, you know, what needs to happen to Absolutely. get the offer accepted. But but start with, do they have other offers? Because yes. we, are, we are coming out of a market where we assume that we are competing, right? Because every house that we've written an offer on for the last two years, we were competing and we were writing the very top best offer we could offer, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a safe assumption anymore that they have multiple offers? No. No. The first thing we need to ask is, do you have other offers in hand, right? Because could that change the way your buyer wants to write their offer? Yes. Should that change the way you advise your buyer to write the offer? Yes. Okay. So make sure you're asking that question. Every time somebody comes to me and says, I've wrote this offer, I've wrote this offer. Will you take a look at it? My first question is, did you talk to the listing agent? You have to talk to the listing agent. Those of you that have had listings, has it ever stunned you? when you got offers from people who didn't bother to call you. I mean, I, I almost, you know, would question, do I even want to work with someone who didn't call me right before they wrote an offer? How is this going to go? How is this transaction going to go if they didn't even call me before they wrote the offer? Right. So make sure you're making that phone call. 
Now, sometimes the listing agent might not call you back. If they don't call you back, send a text. If they don't text you back, then you're going to have to assume, right? Look at days on market. Are you paying attention to that? It's yes. Been on the market for a while. You know, do you do you think you have to make your top dollar offer anymore? We're getting back to the point where we get to use our negotiating skills to benefit our buyers in a positive financial way. I mean, we've been benefiting our buyers all along, but now we get to maybe let them get a house at a better price because we may have the opportunity to negotiate that way. So make sure you understand what that is. All right. And then sellers, we have to manage our sellers' expectations right now. We've been in a market where they could put the house on the market, have multiple offers and be under contract in 24 hours. Is that the reality? No. At some price points, it still is, right? Because it's not like a shift overnight. One day it's this way, one day the other, right? But pay attention to that. The seller that I mentioned that we staged the house for yesterday also happens to be a loan officer and she was stunned and she knows what's going on in the market, right? But she was stunned that this was happening to her. So we have to make sure our, our sellers know that the market is changing and we need to be able to explain that. What do we need to do to make sure that we are comfortable explaining these things to our buyers and sellers? Make sure we're educated, make sure we're doing the training like today and the other training that the office is having about the market. So make sure we're attending those and reading and all that good stuff. You know? I love it. Yes. Thank you to Makia. And thank you guys for being here because you guys, I know you are. What mm -hmm. else do we need to do besides educating ourselves? Good practice practice it we have to be we have to be comfortable with the conversation so when you guys come on at script practice in the morning be intentional about figure out what do i need to practice this week pick here's another action item pick something you want to learn and get good at every week and when you come to script practice make sure that's the conversation that you're practicing this week i need to talk to sellers about the shifting market so I want to practice that, right? This week, I need to talk to buyers about the changing interest rates. So this is what I need to practice, right? Make sure you're having those conversation practices. Don't necessarily call them scripts. Is there always a script for it? It's a conversation practice, right? You need to make sure you're, you're, you're getting comfortable with having those conversations. All right, so your website's gonna capture inquiries. We know that that doesn't happen as often as it used to. Um, and then make sure you're following up, follow up, follow up, follow up. That's different than follow up in our calendar, right? If we haven't talked to them yet, it's lead generation. Lead follow up on your calendar is when. What are we, who are we calling when we're doing lead follow up on our calendar? Your opportunities are people that you're already working with. Yes, people who have already said yes or maybe. That's lead follow up. Lead generation is looking for yeses and maybes. And that could be, I have leads. Yes, I have Op City that came in. And yes, I'm following up with them because I have not created a relationship yet, right? Think of lead generation as creating a relationship and lead follow-up as continuing a relationship, if that helps you with that. All right. All right, we can skip all of that. I love this though. I know you guys. This is the beautiful thing about Saturday as I don't even have to worry about this because I know you're not a prisoner because you didn't have to be here. And I know you're not a vacationer because it's Saturday morning, right? <laughs> There's so many better things you could be doing today. So you are the explorer, you're curious and you are wanting to do the right thing for your business. And I appreciate that from all of you. I am very grateful for you guys to be here on a Saturday morning. All right. I think this number is probably closer to 100% now, right? Uh, who uses the internet? It says 90% of all home buyers search online. I bet they all search online. And not only do I bet they search online, I bet they search multiple sites online, right? Because they are hoping that magically Zillow is going to, okay, they go to your website and they get 10 houses in the area they want. Then they go to Zillow and they get 20 houses and they think Zillow is better than your website. What do we tell them about that? Um, really, it's the same thing. And um, Zillow may have, may not be updated. Yes. And why might Zillow not update their website? Because they to want to the leads. <laughs> yes, it's bait. They want to tell the information. It's bait. They're baiting 
for your information. So they leave pendings and solds on there to get you excited to give them their information. My website, do you want do you want information on houses you can't buy? Because that's what you're getting on Zillow. That's the question to ask your buyer. Well, when you use Zillow, you're likely going to get information on houses that aren't for sale. Is that what you want? Or would you rather just have it all filtered out for you so you're only seeing the houses that are actually available? Which is your preference? Right? So make sure they know that. Um, Biden. All right. And then and then they use their phones. Agreed. Everyone uses their phones to get on the internet. So your app, that's why you want to teach them your app. No. All right. Um, this these are truths, whether it's older or not. A great website may bring you a lot of visitors, but it takes more than a great website to get a customer. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Are there lots of great websites out there? Yes. The website is only the connector, right? It's only the attraction. It's the piece that gets you close to the lead. Then it's your job to get over the hump, right? If you have a system in place to capture the buyers and sellers information, um, and you have a system to convert them into relationships, right? That's what you need to get make the internet leads work for you right? Or any lead to work for you. You have to figure out how to get their contact information. And then you have to have a system to create the relationship. And that system has to probably include a phone call. I know everybody really likes text and emails, but phone calls, right? Phone calls. Buyers and sellers are looking for help and trusted advice from an agent. If they could do it all online, would they, would we even have a job? No. <laughs> and at one point in time, that's what Zillow was trying to do. And then Zillow realized that it wasn't going to work. And Zillow has backed off from that now, right? They now are our brokerage. You guys know that, right? Zillow is now in our MLS as a brokerage. So they realized that they can't, it can't all be online. This is not like buying a car. You know, there's no Carvana of real estate. So it's going to take this is, this is a service industry, right? They need a trusted advisor. This is a huge financial transaction. Who wants to do that online? So internet's where they're going to find their information, but they need you to finish the transaction. So you've got to have the conversion, but it is a numbers game. And if you're going to get your leads from the internet, it is volume. We know that internet leads convert at about one to two per hundred. Okay. We also know that if you run Facebook ads, those people are top of funnel and might be 12 to 18 months out. Okay. So think about that. Facebook internet leads 12 to 18 months out. They're top of the funnel. If they're top of the funnel and they're 12 to 18 months out to being able to buy a home, what does that mean we have to do for 12 to 18 months? Nurture them. Keep calling and following up. We have to become their best friend. Right, we have to we have to talk to them on a regular and consistent basis, both on the phone, via text, via smart plans. Right, that's our leverage piece. We have to make sure we're staying in front of them. If they tell you that they're going to be ready a year from now, what do we have to assume in order to make sure that we don't lose them? Smart plan. What'd you say? Put Grace? I said put them on your smart plan smart so plans. they get yes. yeah, they get information from you every three months or four months. Absolutely. I've always been told cut it in half. If they told you a year, cut it in half and assume it's going to be six months and treat them as if they're going to buy in six months from now. Okay. What we don't want is for them to draw. And we also need to educate them. What's one thing we need? If somebody tells you they're going to be ready to buy six, they're going to be where they say, you know what? I just signed my lease. So I'm going to be ready next June. What do we, what do we need to make sure we do with them right now? Educate them on the interest rates and try we need, to connect them with yeah, them. We need to educate them. They, they, they can't get out of their lease. It's $50,000 to break their lease, right? So they aren't leaving their lease right now. Interest rates aren't important. Do we still need to get an appointment with them right now? Yes. Okay. And at that appointment, what do we tell them why we want to have an appointment with them right now? Because you're building a relationship. Yes. And there's going to be some things you need to know about buying a home. 
And I went, and there's some things you're gonna have to do to prepare. So what I'd love to do is let's get together for 15 or 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Let me walk you through the home buying process and we can make a list of things that you need to start thinking about between now and next year when you're ready to start looking. Maybe have them like, you know, start saving their, you know, 20 or, you know, their down payment and their closing costs yeah. and stuff like that so that they have negotiations when they get to closing if the market you know is how it is now that that buying process is like hey you know you if you want to have a, a decent negotiation like you know more down or you know offer to pay all the closing costs and and stuff like that too so they have a whole entire year to be saving that money up I love that. Yes, we can teach them what they can do to be ready. The other thing we can teach them is something like this. What's likely to happen? They think that they're going to be ready next June and you they haven't heard from you and it's May and they are out driving around and they see a house that they like and they do what? They call the listing agent. They call the listing agent. So with our very first appointment, we can tell them, now look, you may be driving around and see the perfect house and there's a sign in the yard and it's got a phone number on it. Or you might be driving around and you see a sign that says open house and you decide you're gonna go in. Or you might be driving around and you see a model home and a new build and you decide you're gonna to wanna to go in. And I just wanna tell you right now that if you talk to those agents without me there, you're not going to be able to have representation because they're not gonna let you work with me, right? Now, if you're at a listing, they represent the seller. And if they represent the seller, do you think they can also have your best interest at heart? Right, ask the question, let them self-discover and give them extra of your business cards and say, so here's the deal. You see an open house and you wanna go to it, great. To give them one of my business cards, leave this in your car. And if you go into an open house, give them my business card and say, I already have an agent and that way they won't follow you around the house. Right, now you've given them a reason to do that, right? And if you go to a builder, right? Give them my card, tell them you work with me and that way they'll let me help you. Otherwise you're not going to be able to have me help you. You're going to have to work with the builder's rep and the builder's rep's probably not going to have your best interest at heart, right? So educate your buyers on the front end if they tell you a year from now. I got on a tangent, didn't I? That's very big for me though, because how many of you guys want to talk to somebody, they say, yeah, I'm going to buy next June. And you get all excited. You put them in as an opportunity. And then you find out in April, they bought a house with somebody else. Right? We don't I have one like that. Mm -hmm. No fun, right? Because they change their minds. There's a phrase that is buyers are liars. I don't think that they're liars. I just think, A, they don't understand our business. And B, it's our job. It's our job to make sure we stay in front of them. It's not their job to let us know they change their mind and they're ready. It's our job to know that because we're in a relationship with them. And by the time they don't even know when they're ready. So they think that, but then when the opportunity presents itself, they're ready to go for it. Yeah. All right. So sellers, we all want listings, right? So how do sellers use the internet? Well, they're going to go out there and see what's going on. They're going to have an idea maybe of what they think is going on in the market and what their homes are going to sell for. They're going to look at houses that are selling in their neighborhood. They, they're smart enough to know that if the neighbor's house sold, that their house would be similar. Um, they have no loyalty. They have no loyalty whatsoever. Um, but they also don't really understand the process, the home selling process. So if you can get with them and this, you know, I've, I've been suggesting that you guys have these appointments. If you can't get an appointment for the week with a buyer or seller who's ready to go, then find someone in your database that you could schedule a mock listing appointment or a mock buyer's consultation with. If it's a friend, ask them to do you a favor. Tell them as the market is shifting, you want to get better at your skills and you'd like to come give them a, a listing presentation. You understand they don't want to sell their home, but if you could do that with them and get their feedback, what you're going to give them in exchange is a really good idea of what their home is worth and what the shifting market might mean to them. You, they may change their mind and want to sell, right? But you're going to get, you're going to have the conversation. So they need to understand the selling process. And they want to make sure you know your stuff. So that goes back to knowing the market, right? There's, there's no doubt that being educated in our business is like top of the top of the heap. Buyers on the internet, they start early in their timeline. We just talked about that 12 to 18 months. They're going to browse to analyze and research the market. They're going to be looking at houses out there. Um, and 
when they're ready, they're ready, right? When they, they tell you they're going to be ready in a year and they decide they're going to do it in nine months and they're going to want us to close nine months in a day, right? They're ready when they're ready, they're ready. Um, they are going to get on lots of websites and they are going to move quickly from one to the other. So you have to educate them on why they should stay on yours. They're going to, they're probably going to search online instead of going to open houses until they're really ready. That's why my Thursday, anybody want to list to open houses really helps you find motivated people. Um, they really want to understand the process, though. That's why home buyers um, seminars work really well. And again, they want to make sure you know your stuff. They want you to know your stuff. All right, technology. E-Edge, we don't have anymore. We now have command, and we've been talking about how to use that. How can you use social media? How can you use social media to find motivated buyers and sellers? You're going to be watching their posts. So you want to, you know, watch what they say and watch what they do. Because a lot of people now are commenting about how high rent is, you know. So commenting on their posts, you know, would you like to, you know, find out more information about how to start the home buying process? Yes, rent is um, currently going up, but when you're paying a mortgage, your mortgage stays the same. So I love that. What's your interest rate on rent? 100%. 100%. Does everybody see that? Do you know how to explain that to a buyer? What question can you ask a buyer to help them see that it's 100%? Because they're not getting any equity or you can, you know, asking them like how much equity are you gaining each month? When you pay your exactly. Home? When you move out of your apartment, how much, how much is the landlord going to give you back mm -hmm. other than your security deposit, right? How much of your rent are they going to give you back? It's hundred percent interest on your, on your rent. Absolutely. Okay. So social media, make some posts, make some regular posts, asking questions, right? Don't just tell people, ask questions. Is there anyone who is interested? Is there anyone who needs to understand what's going on with interest rates right now? If so, let me know. I'm happy to help. Like ask the question, get somebody. What happens when somebody thinks a question mark in their brain? Or you Does the brain like question marks? Does the brain oh, like it if it doesn't know something? Yeah, because they can't rest. So you like you gotta hurry up and get this question answered. Right. Anybody ever like you couldn't think of a name, right? You couldn't think of a name of someone, and somehow at three o'clock in the morning you set up straight in bed and all of a sudden it came to you. Yeah. <laughs> Why did it come to you? Because it was in your subconscious. Your brain was working on it the whole time, right? So put a question mark in somebody's brain and they're going to need to know, right? So say, ask a question on Facebook. Ask the question, say, does anyone need to know about interest rates right now? Does anybody need to know the impact of the three quarters of a percent on selling your home? Like ask some provocative questions and get see what kind of response you get back. Questions are powerful. All right. Instant message, direct message. We've talked about that, right? Somebody just like, if you make a post, if you make a post with a question and somebody thumbs up it, like direct message them. Like they may be afraid to say, yeah, I don't know. Or yeah, I need to know, right? Direct message them and say, hey, I saw that you liked my post and I just wanted to check in. Can I help you with anything? Would you like to get together and have coffee and talk about interest rates, right? Use direct message because sometimes people don't want all their stuff out there in the the public universe. A thumbs up might just be they're saying, yeah, I want to know. Right. So make sure you make sure you're using direct messaging to create relationships or to support your relationships. I mean, this is video email, video text. I was in with coaches last week and there's a coach. Some of you guys, if you've done Ignite After Dark, you've probably met LaJessica. She's from Mississippi. And she was sitting filming videos on her phone. And one of her, her some one of somebody in her database that had had their first grandbaby and she filmed a video. Oh my gosh, I saw you had your grandbaby, whatever. And it's like 10 o'clock at night. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, I do five of these every day. And then, and then I put them on my calendar and tomorrow I'll send them. But I found that if I do my videos at night, I get the videos done and then I can send them the next day. And so she was just creating these little vi little video, very personal little videos like, hey, I saw you. That's the one I remember. You know, I, you're going to be such a great grandma. That's what she said in that. And I was so sweet. 
So think about that. Can you use video messaging? Because if somebody sends you a text, you might read it. it, it might register with you. But if somebody sent you a video, you would definitely watch it, wouldn't you? Would that have an impact for you? Mm -hmm. so, I love that. I thought that was so good. Okay. Uh, your two reasons for a website, you have to have one, you've got one. So we have, we created an action item. Everyone here today is going to go look at their own website. Yes. Yes. At least look at it. If you don't know what it looks like, how are other, how are you going to know what other people are seeing, right? You got to know what it looks like. Um, and then, yeah, we're just going to skip over the rest of that one. All right. Four C's. We're going to wrap up with the four C's. These are the four C's you want to make sure you're thinking about, not only with internet lead generation, but with all of your lead generation, right? You are looking to capture interested people. You're looking to connect with them on a personal level. You want to cultivate the relationship over time, and then you want to close for an appointment. So capture, connect, cultivate, and close are your four C's. Now, what happens if you capture interest, interest, interested people, you connect with them on a personal level, and you skip the cultivate a relationship part? What happens? You lose them. You lose them. You find out they bought a house, right? They bought a house with somebody else, right? Jay, I'm going to throw you under the bus just for a second. Sorry about this. But... If you're in Op City, all of a sudden you might get lucky and they show back up on your plate through Op City, right? They were out on the realtor.com website and asked to be connected with an agent. And then fortunately they got connected with you. But what's more likely to happen? They only connect to somebody else. They get connected to someone else, right? So we have to make sure we don't skip any of these four C's, right? We capture an interested person. We connect with them on a personal level. We've even cultivated a relationship over time and we never asked for an appointment. What's going to happen? They're going to meet with someone else. They're going to meet with somebody else. Exactly. So we don't want to skip. We don't want to. We don't want to miss out on these. Is this something that you should put in front of you? On a, on a daily basis to remember. Mm. Yes. Capture, find the people that need your help, connect with them on a personal <laughs> level. That's what the Ford script does, right? It helps you connect on a personal level because it's not just business. You're asking about their family, their occupation, their recreation, and their dreams. If you connect with them on a personal basis, remember, know you, like you, trust you, right? They have to know you, like you, trust you personal level is going to get you that no like and trust right that's where you're going to get that is when you connect with them on a personal level and then you just have to cultivate the relationship they may be top of funnel 12 to 18 months out they may be bottom of funnel three to four months out you still have to cultivate that relationship your past clients right you that's what the dtdt's dtd2s do that we call every quarter that is cultivating a relationship over time Best way not to get an appointment? Don't ask for it. Don't ask for it. You have to make sure you're asking for appointments. If you're not getting appointments, the number one thing I'm going to tell you you need to look at is are you asking for them on a regular basis? If somebody says, yes, I want to buy, but not for three years, when should you have an appointment with them? Immediately. Now. If somebody says, we're going to probably sell our house next June after my daughter graduates from high school, when should we have an appointment with them? Now. Now, right? We don't put them on our smart plan or in our opportunities and say, oh, I'm going to meet with them next January. Yes, maybe I'm going to meet with them next January, but should I meet with them now? Right? Yeah. Get the appointment, get the appointment, get the appointment. Okay. Um, I love, you know, you ever noticed at Keller Williams that we really like triangles? I mean, we have leads, listings, and leverage. You know, we have all these triangles, the millionaire real estate agent, you know, the, the, the um, net a million, gross a million, give a million, right? It's in a triangle. We love our triangles at Keller Williams. I love it. So here we've got capture, connect, cultivate, and convert, right? It's the triangle. 
And if you look at the two triangles on the, in the middle and on the end, in the middle, what it's showing you is the agent's time spent with the customer at various stages. Do you see how it's inverse? So capturing the information takes a limited amount of your time. Would you agree with me? Getting someone's contact information takes a limited amount of time. Connecting with yes. them on a personal level takes a little bit more time than capturing their information. We got to spend some time with them, but it doesn't create, you know, it's not a huge time time you're spent with them. Then when we're when we're creating the relationship, because we're doing that over time, that's taking more time, right? Then we're having the appointment and working with them, converting, and that's when we're spending the most time with them. So think about your lead generation and lead follow-up, right? Lead generation is at the top of this middle triangle, right? We do that very quickly. We're calling, 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 calling to find the people, right? We find the people and then we connect with them on a personal level. We have a longer phone conversation with them, right? Maybe we have our first appointment, but it's just one and done, right? Now we got to wait until they're ready and we're going to continue to that relationship. That's going to be over time. We're going to increase the amount of time we spend with them. And then when we get to the end and we're converting them, right? Now, if you look on the other side, on the far right, this is where leverage comes in, right? So capturing the contact, capturing the lead information. Is that something that's, you can fairly leverage that, right? You could run Facebook ads. They could capture 20 leads, you know, in, in, in the amount of time that you spent to capture those 20 leads might be 10 minutes. If you use Jessica Riley, it'd be even less than that, right? That you're, so you're spending, oh, you're having a lot of uh, leverage there, right? You can have leverage in your relationship building, right? That's your smart plans, but you can't have leverage for the appointment, right? The appointment has to be one-on-one. -on -one. When you're converting that at the very bottom of that triangle on the far right, you've got to. So think, think about that. Think about your time and your leverage. So they, they make sense, right? It's correlated. It's, you spend less time when you have more leverage. You spend more time when you have less leverage is basically what that's saying. So make offer for immediate response. Gary loves these. We call them mofers and we talk about these all the time. A mofer would be my Thursday who would like an open house list. So I'm making an offer for immediate response. They say, yes, I send them a list, right? That's helping me. A best buy list. Um, any of you guys have investors that you work with? There was an agent at family reunion in a session that I went to, and I thought it was great. And I think I've told you guys probably all heard it before, but just in case, I'll, it's a good reminder. She sends out a property of the week to all of her investors. And just understand, if you start doing that, it's not, it's slowly them suddenly, just like everything else. If she, if you send out the property of the week, you may not get any interest, any interest. How you're going to know that it's working is when you are late sending it out or you forget to send it out and somebody says, hey, I didn't get a, I didn't get the property this week, right? Now you know that they're hooked. And eventually what's going to happen, you're going to start, they're going to say, I have a real estate agent that sends me a property a week and they're going to tell their other investor buddies. And then all of a sudden the other investor buddies want to be on that list, right? And maybe you'll never sell one of the properties of the week you put on there, but you're showing, what are you showing? If you send a list of investors, a property of the week, every week, what are you showing that investor? You're showing them that you're educated about the market and you know what's out there. Yes, you're educated about the market. You know what's out there. And what? how do they feel? Important. Yeah, they're important to you because you're sending them that every week. You could also create some urgency, right? They're going to see that that's going to other investors and they don't want somebody else to get it. So that's good. Okay. Um, instant notification of homes for sale. How would you like to know if there are homes in your neighborhood that go for sale, right? What do we have? We have this. It's a smart plan. What do we call it? What, what smart plan do we have that, that gives the, the sellers information about their neighborhood every week or every month? The neighborhood nurture. Yes, monthly neighborhood nurture. Absolutely. Okay, you can put it out there. Hey, the market's getting ready to shift. Is anybody, would anybody need to know what their home is worth right now so that they can prepare for what's happening? 
How about this? Did anybody lose money in the stock market in the last week? Would you like to know how much your how much your house gained? Right? These are make offers for immediate response. Why are these helpful? Because it gets people thinking. Absolutely, it gets people thinking. And oh, is this how we're gonna find the motivated? Is this how we're gonna have people think of us about real estate? If we're always asking them real estate questions that get them thinking, do you think then when they actually do have a question, they'll think to come to you? Yes. So you're gonna find the motivated and it's gonna help you solidify you as your go their go-to person because you're the one that's always always offering. But is it is it is it just spamming them with stuff or are you just you're making offers that they may or may not be interested in, right? All right, free reports on marketing. On, on the market itself. Like you could, your multiple listing service sends a report out at the beginning of every month, right? Put that in your own and send it out, right? Ask who would like to have a market? Who would like to have a free report on uh, the market right now? Put that on your Facebook. See what see what comes back out. Uh, for a, This is gonna start coming up, foreclosure and distress sale lists right? So that's something that you could offer. Has anybody ever been driving around and seen that on like a real estate broker sign that says free foreclosure list, free list of for foreclosure properties? There's a, uh -huh. a realtor on East Street that has it out on, used to have it out on his sign all the time. Um, so yeah. Uh, also see more about a property. You do a Facebook live and show three rooms of the house and say, anybody wants to see the rest of the house, let me know. All right, happy to show you the rest of the house. That's a make offer for, for immediate response. So as we're sitting here, what kind of what kind of offers could you guys make for immediate response? Coming soon, Ed. Coming soon. Okay, you just gotta be really careful with coming soon, right? Because we we have uh, I don't know what Louisville has, but in Indianapolis we can only coming soon forty eight hours before the property goes on the market. So if we do coming soon two weeks ahead, we're gonna get dinged by the MLS by the by the board. So we have to make sure we're careful with our coming soon's. We can do available listings. Available listings. Absolutely. How about click here for all properties under, how about this? How about click here for a list of all properties that have been on the market longer than 15 days? Mm -hmm. Tired, tired of competing, tired of competing for, um, tired of losing out every time you make an offer. I, I'm off the top of my head trying to think this up. Sorry. T tired of uh, are you taught? You got to be careful though, because you're not getting somebody else's. You can't take somebody mm -hmm. else's clients. You got you got to think that through. But yeah, you can figure something out. Who would like to know what's been on the market for a long time? Um, how about who would like to see a list of houses that are listed over a million dollars just for fun? Feel like dreaming today? Want to win the lottery? Who would like to see a list of houses that are over a million dollars in our city? I don't think people thinking about it. All right, what other kind of mofers? Open houses this weekend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Open houses this weekend. How about interest rates? Anybody like to see the interest rates for the last three weeks to see where they're headed? Just pull the graph off of bangrate.com. All right, we'll be thinking about that. There's your next action item. Okay, we've got, we've got, what do we got for action items today? Somebody our website. Our action items today. Our website. Look at our website. See who's registered um, to your website. See who's registered to your website and give them a call. Send your app to people to use your app. I love it. Send your app to people to use your app. Anybody going to visit their money? I visit my money every day. <laughs> you visit your money every day. I love it. You don't have to worry about that. And then your mofers. And then your mofers. Okay. So um, let's see. So these are this is talking about registration forms and things like that on your website. Um, and we're we're gonna just kind of 
pop through those. <laughs> You know, when you do a Facebook ad, it's going to it's going to automatically ask you um, it's recommended if you do a Facebook ad that you um, that you let let them use the Facebook. They've they've found that if they use the Facebook registration information, you'll get more leads. Um, now, some of that information might be dated and it may not be good anymore. But uh, remember, remember, if you're doing Internet leads, that it is a numbers game. So I mentioned earlier one to two per hundred in 12 to 18 months. So think about that for Facebook leads. If any of you guys have run Facebook ads and thought, all oh, these aren't good, remember 12 to 18 months, you've got to stay in contact with them. You got to do the four C's, right? So you have to figure out to get the first, the personal connection. If you've never talked to them, you're still working on the second C. You're still working on that personal connection. If you've talked to them once and they said they weren't going to be interested for a while, then you've got to create that relationship. So remember those four C's. Those are going to be really, really important. Um, respond quickly. They may not be ready for 12 to 18 months, but if you don't respond quickly, what's likely to happen? Somebody else will. Somebody else will. Speed counts, right? If you're in um, one of the, like, Op City or the RISE program, um, speed to lead is really important because they are sending it out to more than one agent and those they have already had someone talking to them on the phone so they're going to be closer most of the time they're going to be closer to the bottom of the funnel the best teams that are in realtor.com op city are closing one out of ten so um, those are going to be much better than the one to two per hundred um, and if you don't know what that is, depending on what market center area you're in, next time we are on a one-on-one, let's talk and we can figure out how to get you in to that internet lead um, opportunity or pool. All right. So purpose of connecting those four C's, the connecting, the very first one, you're going to identify their motivation and readiness. Like we talked about, you're going to schedule that very first appointment. You're going to build relationships, move the buyers to pre-approval. And then create action plans for yourself for non-urgent inquiries, okay? So think about that for your uh, thing. Contact rules, call back within three to seven minutes. Those op city internet leads, it is seconds, right? Speed of lead has got to be really quick. If you don't get them, try it a second time, right? Try them right away a second time and then try a third time. Send a text message in between because sometimes people respond to text messages better. Um, be friendly and relaxed to answer questions with questions. Don't require, don't answer questions with answers, require answer questions with questions. You ever get a sign call? Don't tell them the price. Ask them a question, right? What, while I'm looking this up, let me ask you a question. What about this house really interests you? Always ask a question and then close for the appointment. Always be, there's a phrase, it's always be closing. And I don't like it because I don't think we're salespeople, but I do know that we have to have an appointment to develop a relationship. So always be closing to me means that I'm always looking for the opportunity for an appointment. Have to figure out, can I sit down with them? Even if they're not ready to sell a house right now, are you going to be in business later? Do you need business six months from now? Do you need business a year from now? Yes. So just because they're not ready right now, is that make it a bad lead? No. No, 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 no. All right. So I always ask questions. Look, there are some great questions here in the middle of the screen. Are you finding the homes that you like on the internet? Right. How long have you been looking? What's prompting your move? What are you looking for in your next home? Or is this your dream home? Is this your last home? What's this look like for you? Um, and have a form. Do you guys all have a checklist that you use when you talk to people so you make sure you ask all the questions? Yes. If you don't have one, go to the PC library and resources under buyer or seller. There's questionnaires. Make sure you have a guideline that you can make sure you ask all the questions. And at the bottom, make sure it's reminding you to ask for an appointment. Um, when you leave a message, what kind of message do you leave? Um, my name, where I'm calling from, and my phone number, and 
Yeah. Call sure. me to And you're, you're in and out short and sweet and make sure that you've given them a reason to call you back and you haven't taken it away from them. The reason to call you back. Right. So don't call and say, this is Carlin. I was just calling you back because I got you from the internet and I wanted to see, um, what I could do to help you. And if you wanted to go out and see houses, we could do that today. And uh, by the way, the house that you were looking at that you inquired on, it's already pending. Is that a good message to leave? No, normally I would say that, oh, this is Grace, and I have your information that you are interested in this property. I have all the information for you. Please call me. Uh, my number is this, this, this. And then they, some of them calls. <laughs> I love that. You gave them a reason, right? You have information for them to call you back. You can also say, this is Carla. Thank you for reaching out. I was trying to get back with you. Give me a call right? Because they may have clicked on something. They don't even know what they clicked on, but now they're going to wonder why, why were they reaching out to me, right? What, what, what does she mean I was reaching out to her? Be short and sweet, right? Short and sweet in your, your messages. Um, so uh, there is, if you are doing, um, just look in the smart plan library. You're going to find all kinds of long-term, short-term, mid-term follow-ups. Um, find one you like. We have um, one under PC. If you go in and search for um, PC, you will find um, the one that we that I built for everyone to use for Facebook leads. But make sure you have smart plans then that are going to continue to follow up. Because remember the remember the furniture store example, right? You walk in the furniture store and tell me they walk in the furniture store. A salesman walks up to him and says, can I help you? What are they almost always going to say? Let me know if you find something. I'm just looking. I'm just looking, right? I'm just looking. That's what these internet people are going to say. I'm just looking. I'm not ready to buy right now. That's absolutely fine, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. All right. Cultivate. Provide continuous value. Even if they're not ready, what kind of value you can provide them? smart plan the smart plan you could also find out what kind of homes it is that well when you are ready where would you like to live because i'll tell you what i'm going to go ahead i'm not going to blow your email up but i'm going to go ahead and you can set up a search in your website in your command a, a buyer search and you can just send them once a month the houses that are showing up in the area that the neighborhood that they're interested in so you're providing value on a regular basis and also keeping them thinking about real estate um you just want to make sure you're maintaining top of mind status. And remember that's 36 touch minimum. So you need to look at your smart plans and make sure you're getting at least 36 touches that include four conversations a year, right? While they're doing it. All right. And then ask for an appointment at every opportunity and explain the purpose of an appointment. How is, how is meeting with you going to benefit them? That's what they want to know. They're going to spend their time with you. They want to know how is that going to benefit them. So make sure you know how is that going to benefit from them. Conversion, right? Come from contribution. Again, how does it benefit them? It's important to know your numbers. And this is why you report your numbers every day if you're in the 12 weeks of success or every week. Because if you're having, remember, it's 60 conversations to get one appointment. If you're having 120 conversations and you had and haven't had an appointment, we need to talk about what, what we need to change, right? We need to look at what needs to happen because 60 conversations should be getting you one appointment. And we all know how many appointments we need in order to meet our goals. So we need, we need to take a look at that. You have to know your numbers. So if you're not reporting your numbers, I want you to think about, is my business important to me? What do you think happens to any business that doesn't keep track of their numbers? Goes by the wayside. Yeah, what happens if Walmart starts keeping track of their numbers? Better well, example. Walmart. What happens when Best Buy stops keeping track of their numbers? They close. They become Circuit City. Yeah. H.H. Craig. I mean, think of it. I'm not sure they weren't keeping track of their numbers, but exactly. They go out of business. There's that. The reason why I like that analogy is because Best Buy, Circuit City and H.H. Craig were all selling the same thing. 
How many realtors are there? How many people are doing the same job as you? The one that keeps track of their numbers is the one that's going to succeed. So if you want to succeed, you have to keep track of your numbers. All right. So bottom line, let's go through these real quick and then we're going to wrap up. Understand the needs of buyers and sellers and make offers that generate an immediate response, a MOFR. So action item, MOFR. Think about a MOFR that you can institute, put into your practice on a regular basis. You know what mine was. It was the open house list every Thursday. Focus your time and attention on the highly motivated buyers and sellers, right? So that's, you've already had that personal connection with them. Now you're building that relationship. Make sure you're building that relationship. Remember, lead generation is looking for the opportunity to have a relationship. Lead follow-up on your calendar is where you are nurturing that relationship. Those are the people that have said yes, and maybe those are your highly motivated a lead is someone who's ready, willing, and able to buy or sell real estate now, except for in your command. A lead is somebody who might be ready or who might want to sell and your contacts become. So that's where the, the language piece gets different. You just have to figure out how you're going to use your tool, but don't forget about the L, the lead in your command and how you can separate the people that you go back to those four C's, right? An L in your command means they're at the very top of that. You've, you've got their contact information. You turn the L off once you've made the personal connection. And now you know you're in relationship mode with them. All right, uh, uh, there's no such thing as a bad inquiry, just inquiries that aren't followed up with. So when you tell me that you're, all the leads you're getting are bad, what does that tell me? You're not following up. You're not following up, right? Exactly. Likely. I mean, is it possible that you get a lead and they have no good phone number and no good email address? That's Absolutely. a bad lead. That's the only definition of a bad lead. A name with no contact information is a bad lead. Everything else, if there's one good piece of contact information, then it's a good lead. Um, don't capture a bunch of inquiries that you can't address in some way. So don't run Facebook ads if you don't have a smart plan set up and you don't have time on your calendar to call them. Don't mail postcards if you are not going to follow up with them because you just flushed your money down the toilet. The postcards, flyers, things that you mail are only as good as the follow-up. You have got to follow up after things or you shouldn't have done it in the first place. Use automated systems when you can um, to capture the inquiries and to focus more time. Remember those, those triangles, right? You want to focus your time on relationships. That's what you want to spend your time thinking about. All right, so that's fun. I don't know what that is. Um, that makes really good sense. Okay, your action plans. All right, we've gone through them a couple times today, but I wanna go back over them real quick. All right, so number one, number one action item from today. Visit Check our your website. website. Visit your website. Number two, send your apps to your clients, send apps to clients. Okay. And then not only to send the app to the client, what else? Teach them how to use it. Teach them how to use it. Okay. All right. Number three, see who's registered on our app or website. See who's registered on your app or website. And then what? follow up with them and then call them okay four another incorporate, action item incorporate oh, incorporate uh uh in your everyday routine looking at uh, my board mls whatever yes okay and getting the numbers getting some numbers off of it so right. you make sure you know what's going on the market yep Make sure you know what's going on in the market. And MOFRS, Ann, you said MOFRS? Absolutely. Yes. All right. So visit your website, send your app, and teach the people how to use it. See who's on your app or website, and make sure you call them to find out how you can help them. Come up with your MOFR, and make sure you know what's going on in the market. And then we forgot visit your money again. Maybe that's because you all are visiting your money. Come visit our money. If you do these things, do you know 
the the NAR, NAR has this statistic that bothers me. It's it's fundamentally what gets me up in the morning. This bothers me so much. And it is that only 20% of people who get their real estate license are still in the business two years later. I mean, getting your real estate license is not an easy thing to do. And passing that godforsaken test is horrible, right? Then you spend money, you know, you spend money on your board dues or whatever. 20%, only 20%. And here's what I know about all you guys, since you're here on a Saturday morning and you're making the commitment to your business, I know you're 20%. I know you're the ones that are going to make it, but these are the things that you can do to make sure that you do. If you do these action items that we just talked about, you set yourself up for success. What's going to happen when the market shifts is there's going to be some agents that are close to retirement that are probably going to decide they've already been through a couple shifting markets and they don't want to do it again right? And they're going to be, Jay's shaking his head. He knows who I'm talking, you know, he's got somebody in mind that's going to be that person, right? So we know that there are going to be people. We also know now that 80% of people who get their license aren't going to make it. Anybody who's not showing up and not doing the work, they aren't going to make it. But you guys all are going to. So just put your work in and you know what happens when they all fall away, you get to take over market share. So that's why this is an opportunity for you. And that's why Everybody keeps talking about the shifting market like it's a bad thing, but it's exciting. Change is good. All right. I promise I get done early and I did. So tell me, what else do, can I help you guys with today? I have a client that's been pre-approved for about 400000 Now, the father told me that, hey, my son, I want him to buy a house, get him pre-approved. And he said, I know he's going to tell you he's not ready. You have to push it so he can buy. <laughs> so surely enough, he's been pre-approved. Everything is good. And he, I said, okay, I'm sending you listings. We're going out to look this weekend. And so he called me. He said, Grace, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to buy this year. I just want to wait till next year. But you can send me listings. That's fine. But I am not. And so at that point, I have tried all my techniques and I didn't want it to look like I'm pushing, pushing. So what is your best advice for me? Questions. It's all about questions because you aren't going to tell him he needs to do anything. His dad, remember I told you earlier, what happens when somebody tells you you have to do something right now? Yeah, you wouldn't You're do not going to do it. And that's where this, this, his dad told him he has to buy now. He's not going to buy now because his dad told him that he had to buy now. So what you need to help him figure out is when, right? Mm -hmm. Do they all, does everybody have to buy right now? No. 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 Grace, maybe right now really isn't good for him. Okay. There could be a, a number of reasons why maybe right now isn't good for him, but that's for him to decide. And it's your job to help him figure that out. So okay. if you were to ask him questions like, well, let me ask you a question. What is it about buying right now that 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 is, is creating a situation for you? Is it fear? Is there a fear about buying right now? Or could it be that you're not buying right now because your dad wants you to and you're giving, you're actually, you know, and it, you could even ask more. This would be the rest of that line of questioning. So well, I don't want to buy right now, even though my dad keeps saying I have to say, OK, well, let me ask you a question. Is this really about you or is this about control? Because okay. if you don't buy right now because your father wants you to because you want to be in control, are you really in control? No. No, because he's given his dad the control. It's just in the converse way, right? He is, I think he's living with his mom and he's living there for free, but he's making good money. He wants to get married. And so the dad was telling him it's a good thing to get his own place, which he can afford it, but it's hard for him to do that. Well, then that's the case. Ask him the question. Ask him, has he ever watched the movie Failure to Launch? Okay. Have you ever watched the movie Failure to Launch? No. Oh my gosh, it's such a great movie. Anybody else want to see that? Okay. <laughs> uh, what's his name? It's um, Matthew, McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey, right? Matthew McConaughey lives, Kathy Bates and Terry Bradshaw are his parents. Sarah, Sarah Jessica and Parker. He won't, leave, he won't leave his house. He's living with his parents. He won't leave. And so his parents hired Jennifer Aniston, isn't it? Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker, right. And they hire her to get him to move out. 
and it is it is the best movie ever it's so funny okay so grace watch that movie for this weekend and maybe that'll help you okay thank you Yes, they end up falling in love. And Terry Bradshaw turns his bedroom into his naked room, which is even funnier. <laughs> and it's called Failure to Watch. Failure to Launch. Oh, Failure to Lunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, but ask questions. No, seriously, Grace, the best thing you can do is ask questions and then also understand that if now is not the right time, now is not the right time. And okay. sometimes it's their decision to make. And as long as our job is to make sure they're fully educated and that they understand that we have no idea what's going to happen with the interest rate. And so if you wait a year, the interest rate could do something really crazy, right? Yeah. It's likely not going to go down. We know that, right? We know it's not, right. we can look at historical trends and know that it's likely not to go back down. Right. It's very possibly could go back up. Okay. I listened to, um, put a debate on this. All right, I'm just going to say it. So I, I listened to a podcast and it may be political. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem political to me, but it may be political or some people may consider it political, but it's the New York Times. So if you don't like the New York Times, then just ignore everything I'm going to say. But if you do like the New York Times, there is a podcast called um, The Daily. And earlier this week, there was a 25 minute um, podcast on why the feds raise the interest rates and what they're hoping to happen. And it talks about a soft landing, a big R recession and a little R recession. And it gives you some history on the, in the past when they've had to increase the interest rates to stop inflation and what they've tried to learn from those things so that we could have a small R recession or a soft landing and how they're still thinking we can have a soft landing. So if you want some more information about what's going on with the interest rates and inflation and recession and the shifting market, just look at some podcasts. And, and if the word the New York Times doesn't have a political connotation to you, then, then you might look, it's called The Daily. And it was on Tuesday or Wednesday this week. The the session, the twenty five minute podcast was on the risk on the interest rate. So, anything else I can help with? Yeah, All I'm right. trying to go, Armand. Trying to figure out how to use this mobile app. I guess I will learn if I'm going to be teaching somebody else to do it. Right? Yes. Go play with it. That's the best way to learn, is play with it. You can also Google Keller Williams mobile app, how to use. And I, I imagine Nick Baldwin has some videos on YouTube that'll show you how to use it. I play with it. I use it all the time. All right, guys, 11 minutes. I got you 11 extra minutes of your life back today. So go enjoy those 11 minutes, make the most of it. Have a fabulous weekend. If you need me this weekend, text me. I will be out of town tomorrow and I have in my hometown for my niece's graduation and my dad's. It's Father's Day. Oh, happy Father's Day. It's happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day. Guys. And to you all. Happy awesome. Father's Day. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we will be on. Monday is a holiday. Okay. I think the South office is closed. The Northeast office is not. Louisville's not. The West office is closed on Monday. So, um, but we will still be on for huddle and script practice. However, if you are celebrating the holiday, do not feel bad about not coming. I just, I just left it open since we just had a holiday and took some time off. I just left it open. If you need me, I'll be there. And if you're taking the day off, enjoy your day celebrating Juneteenth. Okay.